the dense jungle of the Yucatan in the southeast of Mexico. A miracle of nature, yet little rain falls here, and there are no rivers. A region in which the small amount of rain that does fall quickly drains away into the limestone ground, which is quite infertile. However, people once settled here. Overgrown by dense vegetation, the remains of an ancient civilization can be seen. Once the Mayan people inhabited this place. Today, tourists from all over the world visit the wonderful sandy beaches of the Caribbean, of which the coral reefs are extremely popular with divers. In the idyllic surroundings of this splendid and carefree underwater world, there's no hint of the violent events that created it. Sixty-five million years ago, a catastrophe of global dimensions transformed the appearance of planet Earth. And it all began here. A meteorite measuring several kilometers crashed just off the Yucatan coast in the Gulf of Mexico. It created a crater measuring 180 kilometers. For some time, the dust that was created by this event blanketed the Earth in darkness. In 1988, the traces of this catastrophe were spotted from outer space. Over millions of years, the crater became completely overgrown with coral reefs. And the limestone plateau of the Yucatan Peninsula developed slowly. The splendid sandy beaches of today are far removed from what once took place here. It's now a place of both leisure and pleasure. Within the jungle are various entrances into another underwater world. The Chinotes cave system, a vast subterranean world that extends deep beneath the Yucatan. A few years ago, a number of courageous cave divers started to map this almost inaccessible dark underworld, a very dangerous project upon which to embark.
Little light from the outside world enters the uppermost regions, but the light attracts the fish that live here. The openings within the jungle have been created from limestone which forms the ceiling of the caves. These openings are entrances into a unique habitat. The Chinotes are a large and tangled cave system of amazing dimensions and they contain subterranean connections with the open sea. The water produced by the rainfall flows as a wide stream of fresh water through endless tunnels into the sea. Depending on the tidal water level, the Chinotes eject fresh water into the sea and draw salt water from the sea into the cave system. But how did the Chinotis originate? They started as a reef, but following a drastic change in the water level, they became exposed. Along the edge of the crater, numerous fissures appeared. Rainfall enlarged the fissures in the coral limestone and gradually created a cave system that extended beneath the ocean bed. The Chinotes have always provided the people who settled in this region with a good supply of fresh water. The Chinotes have become the life source of the Yucatan in which there's now rainfall for two thirds of the year. After the great catastrophe, a new era began. The mountain ranges of the eastern Sierra Madre began to rise. The sea level fell and a land bridge originated. The volcanic highlands of the Yucatan emerged and below, a unique natural wonder was formed, the massive cave system of the Chinotis. Experienced cave divers and archaeologists explore the endless labyrinth. And more than 500 kilometers of the groundwater flows of the Yucatan have now been mapped.
but this represents only a tiny section of the largest flooded cave system on our planet. Much still remains to be discovered. The name Genote is derived from the Mayan word Tsonot, sacred spring. That is what the Mayan people called the countless small waterholes of this region. The ruined city of Chichen Itza is the most impressive monument of Mayan culture, a civilization that existed in 2000 BC. The city of pyramids had a mysterious end, prior to when the Spanish arrived in the Yucatan in the 16th century. Since 1923, around 25 buildings of the hundreds more that are covered by dense jungle vegetation have been excavated. The ruins look hard and unrelenting, like the sunbeams amid this sparse land. Here, the lack of rain caused many to die of thirst. The holy springs played an important role in Mayan mythology. Beneath the Earth's surface lay various entrances into the hidden underworld, the sacred springs of Genotis. This was the dark primeval sea of the afterlife, in which the gods and the ancestors of the Mayans lived. Animals also lived in this underworld. Indeed, the entire earth was a living being. Those who exchange daylight for this watery world dive into the depths and a labyrinth whose dimensions can only be guessed at. A safety line and underwater compass are the only guides back to the surface. A true adventure, but only for the experienced and start of heart. Flooded tunnels, clefts and caves connect the many Chinotas across far distances. The mystic play of both shadow and light creates the feeling of being in an enchanted world.
Even for the experienced, cave diving is always a challenge and should only be done with a team of divers so that in case of danger, there's always someone to help. Problems that occur underwater must also be solved underwater because within a cave system it's not possible to escape directly and swiftly to the surface. It was often wildlife that led people to the waterholes that lay well hidden in the dense vegetation. Mayan belief was based on fact. In a mystic way, they understood that the entire vegetation of the Yucatan depended on the waters of the Chinotis, the circle of nature. Their ruling monarchs embodied the incarnated tree of the world. They were travelers between this world and the afterlife. And they saved the cosmic order by the frequent sacrifice of their own blood. The Mayans often constructed their buildings next to the Chinotis because a reliable supply of drinking water was vital for their cities. Thus this wonder of nature assured the survival of an entire people in a region in which little rain fell. What once originated due to a catastrophic event is today serene and beautiful. The coral reefs of the Yucatan coast, a colorful underwater paradise. A large variety of sea life inhabits the reef that continues to grow. It's here that the Chinotis have their subterranean outflows. Some of these water channels continue underneath the seabed and exit about half a kilometer from the coast into the open sea. When looking at the small water holes, it's difficult to believe that there's such a huge cave system below them. It's also difficult to believe that this inland cave system connects with the open sea. The creatures of the caves have adapted to the varied lighting conditions. Coral Reef, there are several cast caves. But 
Between the many cenotes, there are several subterranean routes, and each one is different from the other. The cave divers always discover something new. The dives often last for several hours and penetrate the deepest areas of the Chinotis, a world of constantly plunging depths. It's a highly dangerous adventure that requires precise preparation of the various technical devices involved, as well as much experience and constant caution. If there's a major problem, it's necessary to surface in gradual stages in order to avoid life-threatening damage to the inner organs due to decompression. The jungle has overgrown the traces of the Mayan civilization, but beneath its leafy roof, both ruined cities and caves are waiting to be discovered. Hidden and hardly recognizable, the entrances to the caves look like small ponds. Water lilies grow on them. But beneath is a world of wonder. The largest flooded cave system in the world. An underwater nature park of the superlative. After the Ice Age, the sea level rose once more. Salt water penetrated from below into the caves, and from above, the caverns filled with rainwater that became trapped. During millions of years, the groundwater level rose and then sank. So for thousands of years, the caves lay dry. At this time, the incoming water washed the lime out of the porous rock and dripstones originated that also remained long after the caves became flooded once again. Today, it's incredible to think that this underwater fairy tale world was created by catastrophic events and remarkable freaks of nature.
water has always been synonymous with life. And along with religion, water was the central element of Mayan culture. Along an astronomic axis, the Mayans built temples in which to worship the feathered snake, the father of all the gods, and the rain god Chak, who demanded human sacrifice. The facades of many Mayan temples contain the masks of their gods, and threatening stone heads still appear to be eagerly awaiting their sacrifices. Well-preserved relief walls feature a number of specially worked stones that were most likely used for various rituals. Some of the cenotes have their entrances in cast caves on the surface that resemble the flooded caves and demonstrate their origin more clearly. It's only a question of time until the cave ceilings will eventually collapse, thereby leaving entrance holes exposed on the outside surface. From the surface of the cenote, there's fresh water to a depth of around 29 meters. The water is crystal clear. At this point, the water density changes, and this is known as the Hallock Line, the dividing line between fresh and salt water. There is also a layer of tanning agents that's produced by the decay of organic matter such as leaves and tree branches. This layer is also located here. Beneath is salt water, and it's darker, the layer of tanning agents blocking the light. In contrast to most of the inhabitants of this nocturnal underworld, the eyes of the Chinotis shrimp have remained intact as it lives close to the windows of the outside world. When divers break through the critical hallock line, they notice the smell of rotten eggs that penetrates through their masks. The 
burning agents and the toxic hydrogen sulfide of the bacteria begin to burn the skin. The dive is becoming increasingly difficult. The high density of the salt water slows down the progress of the divers when they penetrate the hallock line. It requires much strength to swim through it. Because the Mayans not only sacrificed humans, but also objects to the rain god, the divers also keep an eye out for any treasures that may be lurking. but finds a few and far between. After some time, decompression time forces the divers to return at a gradual speed. One knows what treasures may lie hidden in the Chinotis, including, no doubt, numerous sacrifice bowls. So the myth lives on. The almost impenetrable jungle around the entrance holes into the underwater cave system also adds to the mysterious atmosphere. The underworld of the Mayans will hopefully remain a myth as the roots of the world tree reach far into the depths and preserve the rhythm of life. A cycle that continues to repeat itself, like the sun that rises each day above the Chinotes and sets again in the evening. The mouth of a chinote that entered the sea was the ideal location for the Mayans to build a harbour. So Tulum was created on the Caribbean coastline of the Yucatan. Tulum was a junction of both inland and maritime trade and also an important centre of religion. Indeed, one of the last Mayan cities had its high season here. Close to the coast, the outflows of the Chinotes lie only a few meters below the coral reefs in which there's an explosion of life.
coral reef communities and seaweed meadows of the shallows provide an abundance of food for the fish, and the rocky formations offer good protection. The coast has become very popular with tourists, and there are several diving schools here. The further inland, the deeper sinks the groundwater level. Villages and places of culture have always been constructed close to the waterholes. Only a few of the Chinotes were able to supply an entire city with a constant flow of fresh water. Myths, mysteries and enigmas enchant Mayan culture, whose ruins are surrounded by dense jungle. Remains of splendid ancient buildings and temples highlight the close connection of Mayan architecture with ritual ceremonies. Today, Mexicans secured by rope climb high into the trees, a practice that has its roots in the ancient mythology of the legendary people who once lived here. Here, the Mayans developed the basic principles of maths, astronomy, and architecture. Their pyramids were the basis of complex calculations in time. From their harbour towns to as far as the coast of what is now Panama, they exported goods such as wild honey and a kind of chewing gum that was produced from the boiled juice of the zapote tree. The splendor of the underwater world of the coral reefs no longer shows a trace of the powers of nature that originally created it. Due to their myths and culture, the Mayans well understood the ecology of their surroundings. And the underwater world of the Chinotes was the continuance of the world above. Petrified fossils are also to be found here. Embedded in the coral lime are the fossils of primeval sea snails and conch shells.
the world tree that supports the sky holds the universe together and provides life to both man and wildlife. Its roots travel deep down into the underworld from where it drinks the waters of the primeval sea. Through narrow fissures and deep clefts, the trees cast their roots through the limestone into the caves and into the water that enables them to survive long periods without rainfall. What for the Maya was mythical knowledge, today we have discovered and exploited. Unfortunately, sometimes too far. The Mayan monarchs believed that their ancestors lay at rest within the roots of the world tree. So they made sacrifices to the Chinotis. The downfall of the Mayan civilization began in Guatemala and in the 15th century also reached into the city-states of the Yucatan. Famine, disease and war brought this amazing civilization to an end. The Mayan cities now lie abandoned and most of their myths long forgotten. But the underworld of the Chinotis has survived and waits for new discoveries from its tantalizing depths.